Welcome to episode 57 of This Week in Board Games. In this weekly segment, we talk about all the games we played and do a spotlight on one of them, go over any interesting board game news, and any new purchases. Which I have two of this week. We'll get to those at the end of the episode. This week's episode is a spotlight on the game Imhotep. This is a game for two to four players, ages 10 and up, and it plays in about 40 minutes. Emotep was the most famous master builder in Egypt and was responsible for building the very first pyramid. In Emotep, each player is a master builder transporting stones to various sites to erect monuments. Each player has their own colored stone. Each player takes turns either excavating stones from the rock quarry to their supply sled, loading a stone on a boat, or sailing a boat to a site. When you place a stone on a boat, you can place it in any empty spot. When a boat arrives to a site though, stones are always unloaded from front to back. There are five different sites. Each location scores points differently. Each round is over once all four boats have sailed. At the market, you take an available card. These give you extra abilities on a future turn like loading two stones instead of one, placing a stone and sailing in the same turn, placing a stone from the quarry directly to a site, or straight up points at the end of the game. At the pyramids, you place stones in rows to construct a pyramid and score points immediately. Each spot has a different point value. The second and third layer also score points. At the temple, points score at the end of each round. Only stones that are visible from the top score points. For example, this would score white 3 points, black 1, and gray 1. Points score from the burial chamber at the end of the game. The more connected stones of your color, the more points you score. The obelisks are also end game scoring. The player with the tallest obelisk gets 15 points, second tallest gets 10, etc. At the end of the round, the market gets cleared and restocked. Each round, four new ships are placed out. After six rounds, the player with the most points wins. Allison's on this week to talk about Imhotep. We played this a lot last year. We haven't pulled it out in a while and Allison suggested that I spotlight it this week. Imhotep was actually nominated for the Board Game of the Year in 2016 and it lost to Codenames. What do you think about that? <laughs> oh, how? <laughs> Codenames is like a party game. Imhotep has strategy and it's fun. Um, I really like this game because it plays quickly but there's a lot of strategy involved and it's kind of... Mathy. I'm saying math because it involves these little tiny cubes. You're always making like squares or towers and I, I don't know it kind of reminds me of being in like kindergarten when you're learning how to like count with cubes. Right and then on one of them the the more you connect together like this then the more points you get. So you're, you're trying to calculate wait wait if the boat unloads there in that order is that going to connect to my group of colors to get yeah. me more points. Yeah I feel like whenever there's games like this that do involve like that type of technique it seems more strategic and you're not basing it off of a dice roll. The power to win the game really fully is in your hand and how well you play against your opponent. So if your opponent you know, outsmarts you, then they're going to win. And yeah. so you're not worried about rolling dice and now you're losing because you didn't get the good roll. Some of the strategy also is, you know what, that boat's not full, but this boat has four slots on it, but there's three little dots here, which means if there are three on it, you can set sail. Yeah. So sometimes you set sail to make sure you get a certain spot or go to a different spot that you know someone else needs and then that's going to hose them. So there are lots of decisions on, do I do a move that benefits me or one that prevents someone else? And by preventing someone else, it's usually not as much of a benefit to you. So you're constantly weighing all these options, which is, I like that about this game. And there are a lot of options in this game. So it's not like you can start the game and have one strategy and stick with it. You can try, but if, if your opponents have a completely different strategy, you really have to be able to like ebb and flow and yeah. change as you're seeing what your opponents are doing. And sometimes you worrying only about yourself is the best strategy. Other times, Sometimes the better strategy is to just stop your opponent because they're like just killing everybody else. Yeah, if, if you're playing a four player game and three people let one person run away with uh, a few of the different areas there, then they're gonna win. I guess that's a positive and a negative you could say about the game. It's a positive because the game kind of auto balances itself. So long yeah. as everyone plays it correctly, and I guess on the negative side, if you get some people who don't quite understand that this person making these moves over here is gonna run away with it, then it can be kind of frustrating if you're like, dude, you should have blocked them and instead of going there, now he's gonna run away with the game. Right. But if you get four people who really know what's going on, this is a really fun game. It really is, and there's a, I feel like there's several games that we play with, 
where you're playing together, but everybody plays kind of their own game and it's just whoever played the best. And in those types of games, I feel like I get a little bit zoned out and I'm not, by the time it's my turn again, I'm like, oh wait, where are we? Like I, I get um, bored. Mm -hmm. But with this one, if I'm not paying attention to what every other person is doing, it's going to affect my outcome. Right. So this game, I think one of the reasons I really like this game is it keeps me engaged the whole time. And uh, for someone who gets like distracted really easily and would rather talk the whole time to everybody <laughs> at the table, I need a game that really keeps me focused and engaged. So 40 minutes though, it's, it, this sounds like we're talking about this super deep game. But it's really not. It's 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 light, but it's not. It's it's hard yeah. to describe until you've played it. Now let's talk about the A side versus the B side. Okay. Which do you like better? Definitely the B side. It's the A side. I feel like is a great intro to the game. If you're ne if you've never played it before, play the A side. If you're introducing the game to someone who's never played it before, play the A side. If you have small kids that you're trying to teach the game, play the A side. The B side. It just adds a little bit more complexity to the game. But if you were to just play it right out the gate, it would be a little confusing. So mm -hmm. the A side is definitely like a learning side and it's still fun. But if, you, if you've if you mastered the A side and you want a little more challenge, uh, I prefer the B side. So another thing too about this game, it the order that these cards come out with the ships mixes it up. So it's not like you're playing the same game every time. And the cards that come out in the market are different. So there's enough variety in it that you don't feel like you're just after three or four games, oh, I know how to beat this game. I know the best strategy in this game because it's yeah. constantly mixed up. And then the people you play with and the moves they make totally mixes it up also. Yeah, there's definitely not one strategy. There's so many different <clears throat> options in scoring points. That's another reason I really like this game because you're having to like stay on your toes the whole time and, and try and stay one step ahead of everyone else. Any negatives that you can think of? I mean, it's not that pretty. Yeah, the colors are <laughs> kind of drab. It's kind of, it's kind of ugly. But I know they're trying to represent like wood and steel and stone. And stone. Stuff. Last week, Unearth. This week, Imhotep. Which one do you prefer? Well, considering I said last week that I didn't like Unearth at all, I'm going to have to go with Imhotep. So it was a trick question. <laughs> <laughs> I actually really like this game a lot. So I would put this in my top 10 for sure. I wouldn't put it in my top 10, but I do really like this game. And I think it's one that was really overlooked. It came out, it got a nomination, it didn't win, and it kind of just got forgotten about. And it is a great game. Love it. Two thumbs up. <laughs> Me too, two thumbs up. Before we move on to the next game, do you like this game, Kinsey? I like this game. It's pretty fun. We haven't played it in a while as a family, mm -hmm. but I really like this game. The next game we played is Azul. It won the Spiel des Jahres this year. And this game is quickly becoming one of my favorite games. I really like this game a lot. We play, I played this game three times this week. So I like this one a lot. It's for ages eight and up, two to four players, and plays in 30 to 45 minutes. Sometimes you get stuck with a bunch of tiles and it kind of stinks. Mm -hmm. That's part of the game. And this happened to our friend Sally this week. I got literally the worst luck on the last round of the game. Everyone stuck me with these last tiles, but they don't fit anywhere, so I get all of the negative points. And I had a really good play lined up too, and I'm sad. I have to do negative 14. Oh man. One, this is 11, painful 12, for me 13, to watch. 14. I moved up like five spots. <laughs> that sucked. <Yeah. laughs> uh -oh. I've got Kinsey here. First off, Kinsey just got her cartilage pierced. Check it out. That is so cute. I wanna ask Kinsey a couple questions. So the first time she played Azul was about a week ago and we've played it several times at your request. What do you think of it? I really like this game a lot. It's quickly growing to the top of my list. So what do you like about Azul? I don't really know what I like about it. I just, I like it a lot. Okay, so I'm gonna make a harder question here. So I've got Azul. King Domino and code names. So these are the last three winners of the board game of the year. Which do you like best out of these three? I definitely am gonna have to go with Azul. Azul? Yeah, I really like King Domino, but something about Azul, I just really like it a lot. 
this one, it just has a lot of strategy for such a short game, which I really like. Cool. My friend Eric came over again this week and we are working our way through a bunch of two player games. We've got, we picked 10 of them and we're gonna do a video and rank all 10 of them when we're done. We only have two left and this week we played two more. First one is a game called The Blood of an Englishman. This is for two players ages 10 and up and plays in 20 to 30 minutes. One person plays as Jack, one person plays as the giant and it's got this beautiful artwork in the game. I'd like to play with you sometime, Kinsey. I think you'd really like it. It's asymmetrical, which means that each player has different abilities. So Jack is nimble. He's trying to climb the beanstalk and steal the treasures and the giant is trying to stop him. Hmm. And the giant's trying to get the fee fi fo fum cards together. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Uh, I really enjoyed this game. We need to try it sometime, Kinsey. I'm gonna move these four over here. Gee, that's a shocker. And the giant wins this round with fee fi fo fum And Eric's thumb. Sounds really fun, I wanna try it. Yeah, let's try it sometime. Next, we played Seven Wonders Duel. Have you played this one, Kinsey? I haven't, actually. Oh, we gotta play this one, too. This one does a phenomenal job of taking the card drafting mechanism to a two-player game. Mm -hmm. So when I say card drafting, the first one that comes to mind is Sushi Go. Yeah. Really easy, choose a card, play it, pass. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Seven Wonders is more complicated. And then this is a two-player version. So instead of passing the cards, they lay them out on the table and some are face up, some are face down. Oh. We're going into round three of the Pantheon and we're setting it up based on this card. Each round has a different structure. So we're gonna do two face up, one, two, three face down, one, two, three, and two. And that's round three. I didn't shine in Pantheon, Eric beat me again. What did you think with the Pantheon, Eric? Oh, I, I like it that you have other options to do it and create, uh, it's not as um, obvious what path you're gonna have to take when it comes to taking the cards. And I think that's one of the reasons they designed this is to give you another option. That's how I was to, able to hold this back a little, just long enough where I could push you back just far enough. Just barely, I mean, one space away, it was that close. Good game, Eric. Yep. Awesome. Cool. This one is really good. And we played with the base game first, and then we played with the Pantheon expansion. And the Pantheon really is awesome. I, I like the base game, and the Pantheon just makes it the next level. So let, we'll have to try it soon, Kenzie. Mm -hmm. You've talked this one up enough. Yes, <laughs> it's one of my favorite two-player games. Oops, no spoilers on the, the top 10 video of two-player games. Quick question then, what's your favorite two-player game? Mm, this is a hard one because I really like Patchwork. That one's really fun, but then mm -hmm. I also like the Agricola. The All Creatures Big and Small? Yes, That's the Agricola, All Creatures Big and Small. Where does Jaipur rank up there with Ooh, Patchwork? Mm. I think I like Jaipur more than Patchwork. Oh. I think it'll go Jaipur, All Creatures Big and Small, Patchwork. Those are all good games. Cool. There's Ooh. two more to throw. <laughs> the next one we played is King Domino. We played this with two of your friends. We did. What did they think of it? They said that it was really fun and one of my friends picked up on it so quickly and she was like two points behind you. Oh yeah, she almost beat me. I had a little bit of an unfair advantage because I've played this game more than everyone else at the table. We played it with the giant version and luckily our game topper fit it, but this thing is huge. The tiles are like this big. They're literally four times the size of the original ones. King Domino is for ages eight and up for two to four players and it plays in 15 minutes. It's a pretty simple game. These things are huge. Look at the size of the normal one versus the size of the giant one. I think it literally is four times. Let's Here, see. Here, let's see. One, two, three, four. Exactly it. Exactly four times the original. And there is an expansion coming out for King Domino called Age of Giants, which comes out this week. I'm excited to try that one. I like to describe King Domino as a much more interesting version of Dominoes, where instead of matching numbers up, you're matching all these terrains and trying to 
get as many together of the same type with these little crowns, which is a multiplier, and then you get a points that way. It plays in 15 minutes. That's one thing I like about it. It's so easy to play. Yeah. Let's just take a look at how big the meeple is in the giant one versus the original size. That That's is crazy. Wow. It's so much bigger. It's so huge. The only news I had is that that King Domino expansion comes out this week that I just told you about. Other than that, let's move on to the new purchases. Which one do you want to start with? I want to start with this one. Okay, why don't you tell them what this one is? We found it at Target. So this is Ticket to Ride New York. It is like a mini version of Ticket to Ride. And is it a two player? It's two to four players, but it plays in 15 minutes. 15 minutes, wow. So it's not just a, a redo with a different map of Ticket Ride, it's actually a different game using taxi cabs instead of trains in oh, New York City. That's so cool. We recently went to New York City, so. That's right. It's cool to see it in a board game. And then the next one here. Can I open it? Yes, you can open it. I don't think Kinsey knows what this one is. I don't, actually. This is the King Domino card. <laughs> Go ahead. It's like Christmas. You did buy this one. I knew you would. We found this one, Dragon's Breath, in our local game store in the mall. And he was debating on getting it or not. And decided for like 20 minutes if he should get this game. And then he texted my mom and was like, should I get this game? And she's like, yeah. So here's this game, Dragon Breath. Here was why I was not sure if I wanted to get it or not. I've got so many games I haven't played. I need to slow down on buying games. Then again, this won the children's board game of the year this year. Yeah. So I really want to give this one a try and see what it's like. See how it compares to Ice Cool, which won the mm -hmm. children's board game of the year last year. And on the back of the box, there is a out of five categories. And luck is a four out of five smiling faces. And hoarding is a five out of five smiling faces. Interesting. So we'll see how this one plays out. Yeah, apparently you stack up all these stones and there's a ring in each round, the dragon breathes fire on it and melts the ice, and then they all fall out, and then you're trying to collect certain colors. Oh. That's all I know, but it won the children's board game of the year, so we'll give it a shot. Well, that was it for this video. Leave a comment of what games you like to play, and make sure to like and subscribe this video, and I'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. <laughs> we'll we'll do that. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Love it. Two thumbs up. Me too. Two thumbs up. Cut. <laughs>